In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. It's great to be back together with you, friends. We are now in the second week of Lent, and uh, we're continuing to support each other as we make our way through the COVID pandemic with some promising signs. And we begin Mass calling to mind that God is full of mercy and love, and he is delighted to forgive our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So we went up and took the ram, and he offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed even when I said, I am greatly afflicted. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving. I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who quits us who will condemn. Christ Jesus, it is he who died or rather was raised, who is also at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. From the shining cloud, the Father's voice is heard. This is my beloved Son. Listen to him. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say, they were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice, This is my beloved son, listen to him. Suddenly looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. This happy ending homily begins with a sobering truth that after nearly a year of COVID and the passing of more than 500,000 Americans, it has taken a big toll on us. For some, it has meant the death of a loved one or huge money problems. Even for those who have stayed healthy and not lost our jobs, COVID has probably been more harmful to our spirits, to our resilience, to our outlook, to our irritation level than we realize. So if you find yourself stressed out, a little angry, down or whatever, give yourself a break. You have been through a year of a horrible pandemic and you probably don't realize how much stress that causes. Similarly, if you see others behaving badly, cut them some slack, give them some compassion. They too have been worn down dramatically by this horrible COVID. Now, what can we do to curtail, lessen the stress, overcome the stress that's been caused by this year of COVID? Well, in today's gospel, we see Jesus being transfigured. Jesus' inner divinity is outwardly displayed in a beautiful way. The three apostles are there. They come into this closer communion, connection with God, with Jesus' divinity, as they witness the transfiguration up close. Peter is in awe. He responds by saying he's experiencing this closeness to God. One translation uses the word as wonderful. Peter, like all of us, 
longs to be close to God, longs to have a communion and a connection with God, with God's goodness, love, beauty, and tenderness. And experiencing this, Peter says, it is wonderful. The transfiguration reminds us also that while God is mysterious, God is incredibly close to us. And the more we can open ourselves up to communion, closeness, connection with God, the more we'll have at least hints of these wonderful experiences. So here are some ways to connect, to experience an intimate communion with God. The Eucharist is a great place. In Holy Communion, Jesus, who is really there, mingles with our hearts in an intimate communion. And even though in this Mass we're celebrating online and we're making a spiritual communion, until that day comes, we can come back safely to Mass. And by the way, I endorse your prudent decision on staying home. That spiritual communion is effective. It really does commune us with Jesus and how wonderful it is to be in an intimate, loving communion with Jesus. Another way we have communion with God's goodness is how we choose our leisure time options. Choosing them based on what leaves us feeling more uplifted rather than what is just merely interesting. For example, with regards to the news, it's good for me to be informed, but sometimes I overdo it. I overdose in the news, and when I watch too much news, it leaves me feeling down, edgy, angry. That's not good. In contrast, when I read a good book, watch an uplifting TV show or movie, look at vacation pictures, listen to beautiful music, observe the sun rising. I feel uplifted. Isn't God in all of these uplifting things? That is why they give us a hint, at least, of feeling wonderful. Finally, when we experience a connection, a communion with God, it can come in prayer. That brings us an uplift we can all use. Look for a prayer that lifts you up, especially during this depressing COVID time. For example, I love savoring Psalm 23's words, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In lush green pastures, he gives me repose. I love picturing lying down in that green meadow, smelling the grass, feeling the blades of grass in my hand, my face being warmed by the sun basking upon me, and then looking at Jesus and seeing his face looking at me with love. Oh, that feels beautiful. Sometimes it even feels wonderful. So as we near a year of COVID stress, let us seek a relieving communion, closeness, and connection with God in the Eucharist, in prayer, and in all that is good, loving, and beautiful, so that we can be uplifted and maybe even feel wonderful. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, 
and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God, our Father, is closer to us than we realize, and he has given us his beloved Son. So with confidence, we bring the Father our prayers. For a swift distribution of the COVID-19 vaccine at home and abroad, we pray to the Lord. For all those who are sick with COVID, heart disease, cancer, mental illness, for their healing and their strength and their comfort, we pray to the Lord. For all those who are needy or vulnerable, the poor, the unborn, those threatened by climate change, the homeless, for their protection and well-being, we pray to the Lord. For all those who are away from God's family, that they might especially feel a calling home this Lent to meet God's beloved Son, Jesus, we pray to the Lord. And for all who have died, that they would be seated at the table of God's children in heaven with Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, we pray to the Lord. And for all the prayers in the quiet of our hearts and in our parish book of intentions, we pray to the Lord. God, our Father, Grateful for this holy season of Lent, we ask you to hear and answer all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <coughs> it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death, on the holy mountain he manifested to them his glory, to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts,
souls. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Sean our Bishop, and all the Church. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us while still on earth to be partakers even now of the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. And if you allow me, I just have a uh, two minute uh, talk about the wonderful Catholic annual appeal, which really does so much for us. Our Catholic faith is something that we all cherish at all times, and it's especially been key for us during these challenging pandemic times. Despite the pandemic, we've been able to say Mass online and in person, hand on the faith through the Religious Ed program, which has a bursting enrollment, wonderful adult online opportunities like Engage. We've been helping the poor. The Archdiocese has been continuing to train new priests and new lay ministers, and so much is going on, and it is you who have made it possible. How have you made it possible? By your ongoing generous financial support of Sacred Heart and Our Ladies, and today we celebrate and thank you for your generous support of the Catholic Annual Appeal. Please consider joining me in making a pledge to the Catholic Appeal. I've already made a hopefully generous pledge to the Appeal from my own personal money, and next week is Pledge Sunday, and I urge you to join with me in making what is for you a generous pledge. Or if you wish to do it sooner, just visit the Archdiocese of Boston website and you can do it there. Our support of the Catholic Appeal 
makes possible the crucial and uplifting celebration of our faith, the deepening of our faith and connection with Jesus, the living out of our faith, something we can do only because of your support during this pandemic time. Thank you for being so generous in supporting our Catholic faith through the Catholic Annual Appeal. And a few announcements said there's the wonderful uh, online button to get into the uh, bulletin. There's lots going on during Lent. There's lots on the website. Please avail yourself of some of those wonderful opportunities. Thank you so much for being connected here in our online family. Uh, the homily Take With You Nugget is as we near a year of COVID stress, let's give ourselves a break and seek an uplifting communion with God that might even be wonderful in the Eucharist, in wisely choosing our leisure time, and in finding God in prayer. Well, I hope your Lent is going well. It's so great to be with you. There are signs that we're beginning to turn the corner on COVID. Uh, please continue to be extremely careful. One doesn't want to let down your guard and, and be like the last person killed in a war. Let's be super careful. Uh, get your vaccine. So great to see so many people making it through COVID. It's great to see you, uh, dearly beloved friends, and look forward to seeing you next week. The Lord be with you. May bow down for God's blessing. Bless your faithful Lord, we pray, with a blessing that endures forever, and keep the faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty he showed in his own transfigured body to the amazement of his apostles through Christ our Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.